So I wanted to talk about the politics of where we're leaving and where we're going. A lot of people just want to play the game just to play the game with their friends, just have some fun, and not even worry about the politics. Unfortunately, you may not want to be concerned about the politics, but the politics are concerned about you, just like in real life. When we ignore the what's going on in the governments, then all of a sudden it comes back to bite us. A lot of us are learning that right now. So this is the kingdom we are leaving, and I've talked about this being the kingdom of bullies in my eyes, but I'm learning some kingdoms are just kingdoms of bullies. But since I had my first ROK experiences in this kingdom, it's kind of tainting my view in other kingdoms that I get involved in, but I'm trying to learn, okay, not everything is just like that kingdom. But this turned out from the beginning to be like a kingdom of bullies. In this zone, it was VF69 who came after us a couple times. One, first time them themselves, second time their farm alliance. But it wasn't all of the players. It was just all of the players came after us because of the narrative that was spun by the people who wanted a war. So... VS69 got a reputation as being a bully alliance. They later changed their name to HRBI. And the reason is, is down in another zone was HRBL. Now, I'm not sure if I can remember what zone they started from because I wasn't taking video at that time. They are the dominating alliance by far at this time. Let's see here. Um, if I go to the Lost Kingdom, maybe I can see where the tentacles come from and we can see where they were dominating and doing their bully tactics. Um, it looks like their tentacles go into El Dorado. No, El Dorado is, sorry about this. So here's HRBL. Oh, down this way. And I'm not seeing the first zone they started in. They're just now in zone two and zone three. I do know it wasn't the zone just immediately south of us. Immediately south of us, this zone was dominated by an alliance called 69Z6, and then they later were renamed HRBE. But by the time they were renamed, most of their major players, or many of their major players, had already migrated out to another kingdom. And I started becoming privy to that between the second elimination of enemies event and the third in elimination event or just slightly after the third um but i wasn't seeing i wasn't knowing that that's what i was seeing at the time um i didn't realize that until later after the king was crowned um so pretty much a month into the game a lot of people were leaving from this alliance now there were five dominant alliances and three of them were bully alliances, judging from the scorecard on the enemy of elimination event that they like to call the kill event because it gives them justification to go after small cities and alliances and trounce them. Basically, prey on the weak, be a bully. So um, the, there was another one over here called K QTC. They were not a bully alliance. Um, I actually got to know the leader just a little bit from personal chat because I was curious as to how come he was, to me it felt like he was pandering to um, Ivan the Terrible of HRBL. But I'm like, it sounds like you guys are friends kind of thing. And he's like, may sound that way kind of thing. And he wasn't nasty or anything like that He um, about him. It's just he was obvious that he knew he was the big player and probably was feeling him out. His alliance left as well. So of the five top, three were always in the top scorecard of the enemy elimination event, and two, I never saw them even participating that I could tell. Um, they were never on the scorecard, and I didn't really see that kind of activity. The other one was P22, and they also have left, just like QTC. Basically, four of the top five alliances have left completely left and gone to other kingdoms, which has weakened this kingdom a lot. They, this kingdom was in the top two until they started evacuating. Some have stayed in this um, region of eight kingdoms that will be competing against each other, and some went to an earlier region when the migration made that possible. Now it would not be possible now that we've entered season one and the others have not. So 
this is kind of the idea of what was happening at the time. Before a council is formed, you'll have a lot of dominant alliances in different zones, and some of them will act like bullies, and some of them won't. And as far as I was concerned, the biggest bully was the one that became king. Um, he was top of the list all the time, and pretty much top of the list even in the enemy elimination until I think he began until pretty much the council was formed which was made up of leaders of the alliances that made it into zone two and those were the top five and that's when things really started breaking down because the leader was so strong he was starting to probably push his weight around that now I'm the boss and I'm gonna be the boss and I'm gonna be king Let's see if we can see how big he is now. Right now he's 126 million. So see how much bigger he is than anyone else in his alliance. When um, Before he became king, he was already at 100 million, and the next biggest was around 20. Now there are a lot more people that have come into the kingdom. Not a lot. Some have come in from other kingdoms. Um, I've had a communication with one of them because um, I had uh, gotten to know them in the other kingdom we're migrating to and thought, um, okay, where does this leave us over there kind of thing. And he says this king is willing to listen to them. So um, I, I imagine he is willing to listen to anyone he needs to bring over to strengthen his kingdom since it's no longer the strongest. Now, mind you, I don't know him personally. I have zero desire to know him personally. I just didn't like his way of playing. I felt he bought his way to the kingship because no one will reach 100 million that fast without spending tons of money and he was always at least five or six times bigger than the next biggest person and so he wanted to own the kingship and I just don't have any respect for that kind of mentality but it's me speaking others can form their own opinions I do know however that always the people in zone one were mistreated each and every elimination event even after the so-called rules, but when the council came into being, the rule was that they were allowed to come into zone one and attack gatherers, kill gatherers, they say, but they don't kill them. They, they don't even get anything from them except points on a scorecard. They don't even get the materials. So it's just like, the motivation is so malicious, and I just have zero respect for that, that mentality and they justify their behavior but they allowed it in zone one but not in zone two and not attacking cities well did they attack cities yeah they still do they still attack cities and they still attack gatherers all over the kingdom not just zone one because that's the entire culture that has been created by these bullies the two alliances that didn't participate must have seen that pretty early on they didn't want to probably even be part of that because like I said a lot of members from this 69Z6 that's now called HRBE because everyone had to become an HRB clone um, anyhow they uh, migrated early on and and I wish I'd known I would have got my people to migrate at that time with them had the person told me that's where they were going the person told me they he left the kingdom but he didn't say where to I didn't know how to figure it out because I'm a noob and I didn't even realize at the time that I could actually go take a look at other kingdoms, but I wouldn't have been able to clear the fog over there at all. I would have had to create a second city. Now, this isn't the kingdom, but just in a general way, I wouldn't have, this would have been covered in fog at that time, so I wouldn't have seen anything going on, but I could have created a second city over there. But I only started making a second city here, for a farming city and I was all new about all of this so I didn't know what I was doing um, but that's why I'm making these videos so I can help you understand if your kingdoms looking really bad start getting people to make a second city in kingdoms in your region or maybe even kingdoms in another region you just I've shown you before it's just under the settings general settings character management you're allowed two per kingdom per account and you don't have to even build it up I mean you you probably will want to but you'll always be in there no matter what even if they so-called burn you to the ground or zero your city your city is always going to be there so you can always pop in if you're in an alliance you can touch base with the alliance and see what's going on if you're in 
you can get onto kingdom chat you can see what's going on a lot of people come into these kingdoms get on kingdom chats and send a lot of uh smack talk we've got someone here and we're gonna cause you disaster and all kinds of things there was some smack talk up above at one time about there's a surprise for this kingdom and then i noticed he's one of the biggest cities in the main alliance and i'm like after all that smack talk you're now working with the biggest alliance is there something about that so there's all of these subtleties there's spies everywhere there's you know people to keep an eye on as far as i'm concerned because i'm in r5 it's about protecting my my alliance you know my my friends i'm gonna do what i can to protect my friends but i want them all to understand the politics of it all so this kingdom started off with five main started breaking up after the first five main actually started meeting in the so-called kingdom council and um by the time the king came into play two of them were already parting company real fast i'd like to find um just the uh tag of and i may have to do it a different way than zooming in on um, an alliance flag okay here's qtc if you need a passport I can supply it to you alliance was dissolved I can only sell passport now the alliance wasn't dissolved because if the alliance was dissolved there wouldn't be all of this here at all what he means by this now is that everyone's abandoning the alliance because you can literally dissolve an alliance and it just disappears so all of these people are actually I take that back. You can dissolve an alliance, but others can take it over if they're in the alliance. And um, I'll do a video on that. That's kind of interesting too, because I have dissolved alliances as well. So this alliance, um, they are this, they put someone in charge in order to keep their shop filled up with passports and other things as well. So anyone can join, and they just to get a passport because a lot of alliances won't buy these passports because they cost 600,000. So, and that's the 600,000 um, alliance credits here in the store. So, um, their expense, or no, they're 600,000 for me to buy, they're 100,000 gold to buy. So, an alliance, when they have to set their priorities of alliance gold credits, they'll decide whether they would even put money in passports or sometimes they won't because they don't want people just using them to get passports, you know. That means they're not committed to the alliance. But this alliance that decided to leave, they specifically said, we'll help you get out. Um, and I don't know where they went to. I want to know where they went to because, um, but you can tell. So all of these people here, they're not really... They're just sitting here. They, maybe there's some friends in here playing together because these are big cities. Um, but if it's an anyone can join now, which I don't see. No, you can't join at this point. So that does mean it has been dissolved, I believe. Let us do an alliance search real quick. Sorry about the slowdown, but I'm just curious what it'll say here if I do an alliance search. Okay, so it shows us an anyone can join. So it just didn't show up for me to join because I'm currently in an alliance. So it really wasn't dissolved yet. Um, it hasn't disappeared. Another alliance that was big, and they were kind of a bully alliance if you ask me. I'm trying to see what name they use because they had many P22. They had an I and an, a little L, and I'm not sure which one it is. I'm going to have to put more in. Let's do P22I and P22L. I. Doing a search for an alliance isn't easy when it's um, specific to lowercase and uppercase, and you can have anyone in too. So this is application only. So they are down to just three players. They're probably just abandoned cities. These three cities, they're probably just abandoned. Um, but 
Look at how he says it. Orange, you lying, stinking dictator. You will pay for everything you did to our family. We have passports. So Orange was a member of HRBL, still is, and um, evidently there was a breakdown in communication between two of these top alliances. And they left to another kingdom, and again, I don't know which kingdom. The only kingdom I know where they went to, and I don't know where HRBI, the former VF69, went. I think I may know, but I'm not sure. Um, but I the only one I know is where many members of the 69Z6 went, this one, but some stayed, and some are now in HRBL. Um, and I'm kind of curious to know is their motivation, to be honest, because I've had interactions with one of them. But I'm just curious, not judging. I just would like to understand people's motivations, because that is really what's at key play here. So this is the politics that we are leaving, and this is one of the reasons why I want us out of here, because Zone 1 people will always be mistreated in this city, as far as I can tell. And we will be a Zone 1 group for a long, long time. And I'm okay with that, but I don't know if everyone else is okay with that. I know some people want to have more activity and would probably like to be in um, KVK, but they're not there yet. And I'd love to help them get there, and in this kingdom, I know it's not possible. So, and then there's those that just want to farm in peace, and, and again, in this kingdom, the way it's it's been growing, it's kind of like, um, <laughs> in the real world, kind of like what most of our countries are becoming like. Those, those of us who just want to have our lives are realizing they're not going to let us. Now I'm going to go over to the kingdom where we are. Oops, wrong. I don't want character management. I have to do account management. We're going to quickly go over to the kingdom where I have the other city where we are going. And um, I have a lot of anonymous account names, as you can tell. I, I like different names for different things. So this is... Um, the, uh, sorry, try to get there. This will be the kingdom that we're going to, and I wanted to explain just a couple things because the things have changed for my alliance, but also because things are very much in change right now. So I mentioned how one of the cities, 69Z6, had gone to the, um, the other kingdom 2772 and that's why I chose this kingdom because I never had any issues with any of their players I never saw them doing any bullying tactics and in fact one of their players helped out an alliance rescued an alliance with me and that's when I learned that he had left the kingdom and I assumed others had as well when I took to look took a look at their roster at the time but I couldn't tell how many and why and I thought well maybe it's just a group of friends but I tried to get him to speak more about it and he wouldn't so a lot of people were hush about them leaving maybe that was part of the arrangements they all had because you have to play things delicately in, in the political arena but this is the center there's three main alliances they share the lost king the lost temple between them they rotate it pretty much on a weekly basis um, so there's no king here there's uh, I guess a republic? I don't know. Um, I don't know how they refer to it at all. They, um, they're they all strong alliances. In the other kingdom, there's only one mega strong alliance, and then the others, their sub-alliances, which they'll be drawing some fi fighters from, um, they're maybe one-third of the size of the major alliance, whereas in this, they're pretty equal footing, very close in size. Um, the smallest, I think, is this one. It was... A little under a billion when I first look. Yeah, it's still a little under a billion, but the other two are over, well over a billion. And um, so, and I'm not giving any secrets away because anyone can see this just by going to this kingdom. So nothing I'm sharing is a secret. You can do this just by analyzing. I am placing our people over here. We'll be part of a farming alliance um, for the time being until we get our feet wet. I've made arrangements with some people here. But over the last few days, and we're only, oh gosh, less than five days away from the first battles, the first KVK battles, I believe. So we are um, seeing a migration out because there were some issues in the council. 
And we got an email around that there was some gossip, and they just, it was a kingdom email that, yes, some people have left, and we wish them well, and if any of those others want to join them, we wish you well as well. And it was actually very friendly. There was no threat or anything to that. It was, I find this kingdom to be very friendly. But some people left, and one of them was someone I had a connection with, and so I kind of communicated with him because I wanted clarity as to how that left my alliance coming in. And I still have very good feelings about this. Um, he's the one that told me that he liked working with the king because he was willing to talk. Now, he was not, I don't believe he was part of the main council, but I don't know who's in the main council, to be honest. That stuff is still not something that is shared widely in this kingdom, as far as I can tell. But I don't know because I only brought my cities in. Oh, let's see. Let's look at my principal city. Let's see if I have that in this account. I may not. I think I have it in my other account. Let me look real quick on, uh, see if I can pull it up on my other phone. This is on my computer, but not my phone. Let's see if I'm allowed to get in and look. Um, it would tell me how long ago I came in. If I look at the age of my first city I brought in to take a look around. This was my third city that I created in 69. Um, I've since made a couple others, but they'll just be small cities there for a while just to keep connections with my friends in the kingdom. Now, mind you, anytime you open a chat with someone, you can keep that chat alive no matter what kingdom you go to. Um, as long as you know someone's governor ID, you can always friend them, and you'll always have that connection through the chat. And, of course, there's always email if you've ever emailed them, but... Actually, I think email is only within the kingdom now that I think about it. If I were to try to send something to um, one of my people in my other, I'm sorry, new mail, in my other kingdom, I don't think it would be possible since we're only really given a list of who we've sent to recently, which is very few, and who are um, in our alliance now. So... Email is not the way. Chat is always going to be the way to stay connected with people from different com different kingdoms. I want to say countries. Different kingdoms. We are rising our kingdoms. So if you've opened a chat with anyone on your list, you'll be able to keep that chat alive anywhere you go, which is cool. And that includes enemies and friends alike. You can still ping them if you want to, your enemies that you've got connections with. Um, and I don't consider anyone an enemy, but I have definitely confronted a lot of people who have then later attacked me, so they, I'm considered an enemy of other people. Um, so that's why I say that. So looking from above, um, since I've been here, and I think it's close to two weeks, I have seen no attacks going on. Um, I see a lot of new alliances coming in, and I know there's plenty of room for our alliance to move in certain areas. I just want the alliance to decide for themselves. I would insist that they stay in zone one because we were a zone one and we don't have the right to move into zone two unless we have permission. This is my belief about how the politics work in these kingdoms. So I would never presume to say let's go into zone two. I would always talk to the leaders. And zone three, of course, definitely off limits. That's only for the ones who reached it through a pass. And even if we were part of those and then made our own little alliance, it would have to be doing it with talking to the leaders. It's something that a lot of players don't understand. You need to communicate to the leaders to understand what the dynamic is. Some new players come into a kingdom that's a KVK already, and they just start playing like it's a brand new kingdom and going after other players. And they don't even learn the kingdom rules, and they don't learn their alliance rules. And when they're wearing the banner of their alliance, they represent their alliance, and so the alliance can come under attack. That's one thing that people really have to understand. What you do reflects on anyone you're associated with. So tread lightly. Get to know the politics in the area. Get to know what the rules are. Get to know the code of conduct. Get to know how people are, are perceiving the area. And in this kingdom, if any of my alliance mates comes in and starts attacking um, other players, of course I would boot them immediately. They gave me authority in the alliance I joined to be able to let people in, which also means it gives me the authority to boot them out. So none of my alliance mates would ever consider breaking these rules, but if anyone were to come over with us 
and do that, then I would allow whatever rules of the kingdom apply, apply. There are even threats of zeroing when you do certain things. I'm going to share just a couple things because I really want people to understand how I perceive this different. One is the killing event. Let me find the email about it and I'll read it. Nope, that's not it. Here we go. Killing event rules. And this is from the 16th, though. This is two weeks ago almost. In fact, this can kind of tell me when I brought this city over. I brought this city over. Oops, that's still in the Old Kingdom. You can see I have 70, 69 emails here. So I brought this city over. So Thunder God is this align or this kingdom. So this city came over on the 13th, it looks like. Um, so here, here's one that I received. We have received several complaints about scouting. As you all know, we are a peaceful United Kingdom and such behavior will not be tolerated. Scouting others isn't allowed. If you scout someone, punishment will be followed. Stay nice and no toxic or harmful behavior to one another. See, that is the first email I received from this kingdom. And that to me sets a tone for what this kingdom is about. I keep telling people, if you scout someone, that's a sign of war. That is a war tactic. And that's how it comes up. Flashing red, flag, all of that drama that the, the game creates. It, it, and the email they get, you've been scouted by such and such, and then if they're a bigger city, they're a bigger city, prepare for war or battle. You know, scouting is something you use delicately. People just scout random sometimes, especially new players. And evidently, new players probably came in and were using scouting probably to learn things. That's not a way to learn, unless you're learning because you want to attack. So then, and you'll see I had some emails out to different alliances about new members seeking a home, and I was uh, um, talking to different alliances, and I finally decided to put us in this farming alliance temporarily until everyone decides what they want to do together. So, killing event rules. This was the last killing event, and one's coming up soon again, and it'll be similar rules. As it was written in our previous MGE mail, killing events will have a limited number of points allowed from kills. Points limit will be 2 million, so no one's going to be able to dominate the scorecard with the 20 millions and the whatever millions that happened in 2716. Rules, don't ever attack cities, don't attack farmers of any alliance, don't think of attacking cities or farmers, <laughs> look at that. You don't do it, but don't even think about doing it. Don't feed yourself or anyone with kills. Now, feeding yourself, that's a term I've heard, but oh, I think that's just a bad translation. Um, the uh, When people go after gatherers, it's like they think they're getting the supplies. They're not. So you're not getting anything by attacking gatherers except for points on a scorecard or the bragging rights of I trump them kind of thing, which... Bullies will brag, they will. And I think of the I think of the tax on the farmers and gatherers being s similar to a tax on civilians in a war. And no one thinks that that is acceptable war behavior. Not anyone that is not malicious of intent thinks that's right. And how can you earn points? Simple. Duels. Now, I do believe these have been the rules since the beginning of the council in this kingdom, which would have been probably as soon as they reached zone two, it would have probably been soon after the first enemy elimination event. Unlike 69, where they allowed it to continue in zone one. And like I said, it continues today, and I'll share in a separate video about bullies begetting bullies, how it's spread in other ways, and still continues. Um, ask your kingdom friends to fight you. It is a great time to test your commanders on the battlefield. That's what I want to do for Military Academy. We do, however, recommend that you save your resources and speed ups for growth and KVK fighting rather than hitting the limit this event. And that's one of the reasons why they limit the two mil as well. You need your activity points for Kingdom versus Kingdom if you become a fighter in the KVK battles. And you need your speed ups as well. You need a lot of resources that you should have been compiling all of this time if your intent was to go to KVK because you're going to need them in a huge way once you reach the Lost Kingdom battles, the K Kingdom versus Kingdom battles. 
What will happen to those who pass two mil points, two million points? Each 100k points over the two million will cost them 10 million food, 10 million wood, seven and a half million stone, five million gold, fine paid. So for every 100k, and if you don't pay, they'll zero your city. Now I've seen this in my other KVK um, kingdom as well. Not this detail, but they've been around for a while, so the detail might be known for those who would participate. Um, which we don't really get. We get rogue immigrants, and then we get players that all of a sudden think it's okay. I don't get that. Some of them are new players, but one of them just recently attacked the king's farm, and I don't know his motivation. I plan to reach out to him and figure out what his motivation is, but I f haven't figured out the details of the attack yet. So, not paying equals zero. We don't want to get there. Make sure your friends won't pass the limits. Please note, Council is working with our top people from the original fixed list to ensure they receive as many rewards as possible. Leadership will approve certain members from the top 15 to surpass this limit as needed. So, we're trying to work on getting more duels for people to participate, and probably those that don't need to go into the KVK right away will be able to do a little bit more. Um, just because a lot of people want to... It's not just about the scorecard for some people. It's also about putting things into practice. So all of the emails I've been getting from them have been about, um, have been very, very positive. I've been trying to find the one. Oh, here we go. No, nope, that's not it. There is one that has to do with the people leaving. And I'm trying to find it. I'm sorry if I'm making you dizzy and I'm sorry if here we go so some people left and I, I want people to be aware of this but there's no serious details and I find this email quite positive because you know you're gonna expect people to leave it's just I ended up knowing one of the people who left so I was kinda curious as to the motivation especially when I saw the kingdom he ended up in so, Kingdom of 2772, hello dear citizens of 772, as most of you know, some firsthand, some through gossip, there has been many issues within the council leadership of 2772. Now here's the moving forward part to this mail. We are working hard to establish ourselves a working form of government here in 772, and we are all hoping and praying that the mistakes of the past don't repeat themselves. 772 is the power of this continent. That is plain to see for all, and that makes me feel so proud. On a sadder note, some of our amazing players felt they could no longer progress here in 772 and have gone to 771. We, of course, wish them luck on their journey and welcome this extension of Hydra we shall have in 771. Of course, many of these players will, of, and are your friends. And if you want to join them there, that is of course fine, and 772 wishes you a fond farewell. As to the next management of the king, H72D shall be taking the temple next, and we are all aware they shall do a fantastic job. Happy gaming to you all. So as I mentioned, there are three top that share the temple, and that was when the, shortly before the transfer was happening. I do know that I saw three players go to 2769 and I saw three players go to 2771. I say this because I recognize the names. How many went, I do not know. I did not, um, I did not, uh, sorry, I keep forgetting I should go up to the map above to zoom in to, I want to show the Lost Kingdom area again, or Lost Temple area, and I keep forgetting to zoom in and use this map up here to move to and I'm gonna make everyone dizzy so when they transfer this between the council of course is made up of leaders in each of these so evidently some top players did not like maybe not being listened to I don't know I'm not I can only make assumptions based on what little intel I can gather from my dialogues with certain players and then the scope of the kingdom email I do know that I recognized some names because some came from the farming alliance that I'm in. They took out their farms, but not a lot, not as many as I, I thought it was going to be one after the other, after the other, after the other, and it wasn't. Um, but I do know that when some of my alliance mates from 69 came over and saw the exit, <laughs> one of them got alarmed. What? He just put a question mark in there. And um, so I assured him that... First of all, I said stay out of the Alliance email because right now I've 
been asking them to stay out of the Alliance email until we come over and we get our, them knowing who we are and what we're about. I don't want them being confused by us taking over their Alliance email. They are a farming Alliance. They don't use, sorry, their Alliance chat. They are a farming alliance, they don't use the chat much, and so if we start populating it with our chat, they're going to start asking questions, and I want the questions to be answered before we start using their alliance email. So everyone coming over, remember that when you're invited by another alliance, you are their guests. You are not part of their alliance as a force coming in to start taking over, or start participating in every activity assuming that it's the same way as from your alliance you're coming from you're not we're moving into an alliance that is a farming alliance of one of the three top so we have access to zone two I don't want anyone going into zone two unless it's by invitation which means if they put a build in I want to ask, can we come participate in the build? Oh, I forgot. I am an R4. I can take down this one flag. Because I'm here a little bit more than them, I shall do that. So, anyhow, when you come into a new kingdom, come in like you are a guest. Don't come in like you're part of the people taking charge. And we are not just a guest of this kingdom at the moment. We are going to be residents if we choose to stay, which means over the 30 days after we come here, we are residents for sure, but we can always move if we don't like it. But get to know people gradually. Don't start coming in, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this. If it's an alliance that the whole alliance decides to form, then you've already got your relationships. Do what you feel is important for the alliance. But keeping in mind, who are your neighbors, what are their expectations, what are their motivations, what are the rules of the kingdom. Don't be breaking any of those rules of the kingdom because anyone who does so, like I've said over and over, it reflects on your entire alliance. So what you're doing in there, if you start talking and chatting in alliance when I've asked you not to, is going to be a reflection on the entire alliance. And I will be doing an email to reacquaint them where we are at and the progress and all that as soon as we get a few more cities over. Um, there is a new leader for me to communicate with, but he's already been introduced to me before when I first arrived because I did start off with an introduction email to various members, if I can bring that up. Um multiple governors. I, I did this when we were moved in and or when I when I was able to join and then I was made an R4 in order to help other people be able to join because this was the agreement that the leader made with me. Actually he said it, um, not me. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. I come from Kingdom 2769. Now that the culture of tyranny appears to be firmly entrenched in my old kingdom, I have started helping small alliance migrate to a new one including two with which I am actively involved in leadership. I learned of this kingdom from a couple of members of H72G after one helped me rescue another small alliance, not my primary, from the bullies trying to destroy its cities and alliance presence. Our BY72 leader, meaning the leader of this alliance, this farming alliance, our BY72 leader has agreed to take in the migrants from one alliance. It is my primary alliance. Grotto di Merlino is my farming city from it. I will gradually be bringing over about 25 active members. Several will start by forming brand new farming cities here in 2772 and then later bring over their primary city. Our BY72 leader has given me the ability to accept them into the alliance as they come. So if you see small cities, which I plan to locate near the pass, in the southeast quadrant of Zone 1, do not be alarmed. I want all of those who wish to have the chance to start here as soon as possible to get used to their new home. I thank you for letting me join your alliance family and looking forward look forward to working with you all. So I sent this out to the leaders, all of the R4s, and I didn't send it out to all of the members because they were farms. So I wasn't sure how often they come in and I didn't sure, wasn't sure how much they needed to know, but now it's time I do it for all of the members and maybe even start communicating one-on-one -on -one when my main city comes over with some of their main cities in the other alliance. I'm going to do that, play that by ear. It's all about diplomacy, setting things up. But I am also going to make it pretty clear that if any one of my members breaks the rules, they let me know and I will deal with it. Because I don't want anyone 
making themselves unwelcome guests and making the entire alliance an unwelcome guest. And I know it sounds harsh, but a lot of people do not get that you have to feel things out. It's just like in real life. You have to figure this out by not assuming and not presuming, but start with the one-on-one dialogues. Don't just jump in with the entire group and start saying, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. That's the activity of gangs of bullies. Um, and I know we have such a great rapport, and I'm glad of that, but I also am making it clear, too, I will not be an R5 of another alliance. I am, I'm ready to focus just on training and teaching, and so any R5 position I have is just for training and teaching. It is not for guiding an alliance. So when you come over here and you start feeling out what you want to do, you may want to stay together, form another alliance. There's plenty of room in other areas of Zone 1, especially over here on the east side where I see that there's a lot of um, dead flags. Um, then you can do that. And um, But you would have to work with, like here, this looks like um, someone's forming a central fortress here, and they may be planning on taking over a lot of this territory. They're just now forming it, and it's already large. So this looks like they will probably be taking much of that zone up. So as much as it looks like it's clear, I don't know how clear it is. And as soon as they do, a lot of these flags will become effective. That's becoming obvious. It looks like they moved their central fortress into zone 2 and let this all go idle, and now they're bringing one back. Um, but that's me assuming because I've not been here long enough to know what the dynamic is with that. But it's a super huge alliance. Maybe it was part of those that went after the Lost Kingdom and was part of the council. I don't know whole, the, whole, the whole dynamic here. I have a feeling that that will be when I start communicating with just to get a feel for whether we can have people move into that area and feel comfortable. But I do know I have not seen any of the big alliances going after the smaller alliances. And that makes me feel very comfortable. And there's a possibility that you all might start communicating with some of these medium alliances and want to join them as a group. Or like this one, it doesn't look like it's been here too long. Let's see. But it does have an H72 name. So... Well, it's pretty strong, and there are two level, are three level. That it's pretty. That's doable for most of you, but they only have six openings, so you could join as a group one of these medium alliances as well, because most of you are strong enough, and then your little cities could be a little farming alliance nearby that you just visit just to get your resources. And I mean by visit, you don't necessarily have to teleport. You just join join the alliance get your resources and then unjoin to go back to your main alliance um, that's what one of the persons asking the question mark was with the question mark was seeing the in and out of, of players was bothering him and as a farming alliance you see that a lot so anyhow I think I've covered enough of the politics I still feel much more comfortable with this kingdom than I ever would with 2769 because 2769, I just have zero respect for the leader, and I have zero respect for the leading alliance. I have friends in the leading alliance, mind you. I do. I just don't think they don't see what I see, which comes from the fact that in the real world, I've been dealing with bullies, and I call them bullies because a bully is anyone who preys on the weak because from a power of strength, or from a place of strength and power, and they exist everywhere. Corporate world, government, communities, gangs in the neighborhoods they exist everywhere and I've been dealing with them everywhere prisons I've even dealt with them in there and some of them I've actually been able to work with and help them realize what they're doing to people um, and maybe I could have if I'd gotten more involved in growing and becoming a leader and speaking out but judging from the fact that so many started exiting real soon like a month into the kingdom I don't think so. I think as soon as the council was formed, I, I have a feeling he was shoving his weight around just from the response that the four top alliances all left the kingdom. So I just don't feel comfortable keeping my people in that kingdom. 
So I want to bring them to this one, and then, like I said, after 30 days, if this is not a good fit, they can look in other areas, but I would totally encourage people, make cities in the other kingdoms first and get a feel for it. Since I've been here, which is well over two weeks, I have not had any negative feeling about it, even with the exodus of some of the players. And I have a feeling that maybe once they start seeing that, yes, they're friendly to you now, but what about the rest of the kingdom? Maybe. It just depends on what their motivation is for playing. Some people play just for themselves. Other people play for the broader picture of what is this whole kingdom about. And one thing I should say is these kingdoms should have a vision for the whole kingdom that will unite the kingdom. And that's something I'm going to cover in a lot of alliance leader training and teamwork training that I'll be doing on my video channel. Vision is so important. If I were to describe the vision of 2769 right now, I'd be, we're going to beat everyone in KVK by being the strongest, and that's it. Uh, that's the only vision I could see with them. They don't care about Zone 1 and how the people are treated there, and they just want to build up their big warriors and feed them to, from one alliance to another alliance to another alliance as they grow in strength, and I don't even know how much they dedicate to training any of their warriors, so, which is another thing I'd like to see more of, too, is train people, and train them early on. As you train them early on, then they become better as they go on to become more powerful. They've got a vision, and they've got a motivation that is unifying. And if I were to describe this one, they're trying to create a unified kingdom. They are, they are making sure that people aren't bullied in this kingdom, as far as I can tell. I have seen zero evidence of anyone being bullied yet in this kingdom. And that's over two weeks. So that is kind of what I'd like to suggest to kingdoms, too, is create a vision. Create a vision statement. One, one short phrase that everyone can say, yes, I can rally behind that. I can rally behind that. I can be part of that. The, that would really be a great unifying force for these kingdoms. So if anyone from leadership hears this, vision, vision, vision. Maybe I should do a vision statement uh, video soon. So anyways, I'm going to say, this has been one of my longer ones, um, but I made this particularly for the alliance mates and other friends that are migrating from this one kingdom to this other kingdom, but in a general way, I too, I wanted people to understand how you can start looking at the politics, and I'm going to start sharing in my birth of a, or birth of a kingdom, maybe I'll call it, yeah, I'm going to call it birth of a kingdom playlist, how when you clear the fog, you can start seeing things as well. I've already made a couple videos for that, but I'll be making more for that. Um, so that people can start learning really early on what their kingdom is starting to look like. Okay, for now I'm going to wish you Godspeed and...